I'm going to discuss the power of crystals. Now, in all due honesty, I was going to deal with astrology, but I said, you know what, I dealt with astrology yesterday. So I'm going to deal with the power of crystals, which is an inquiry I get a lot, especially at the D uh, Health Store subscription uh, service site. The power of crystals. Crystals are very powerful tools. That's what they are, powerful tools. What you have to remember about crystals is crystals are tools to serve you. That means that you are in control of the crystals, the attributes, the properties that you seek out. Now they have 50 to several hundred properties. So you have to know how you're going to use the crystal. What do you want from the crystal? The crystal is there to serve you. The elemental in the crystal is there to serve you. You see, so you have to know what it is that you desire. A lot of people are thrown off with crystals because how do you use them? The shape, like does the shape mean anything? You know, do you hold the crystal? How, where? You know, can you use the crystal for ingestive purposes? You get all type of questions. And I'm gonna break down in this lecture here how to use crystals. There are various ways to use crystals. And I'll be speaking from my personal experience with crystals. Now, just like astrology, crystals too help to change my life. I was already in chromotherapy, so I had basic knowledge more than the average person. See, the average person, they won't know what to do with crystals because they don't understand colors or, you know, chromotherapy. And then, of course, they don't understand metaphysics. But when you understand both, you have some insight. So you have red crystals, which are going to be good for the first chakra because the color of the first chakra is red. And the metaphysical attributes of the first chakra deals with grounding, stability, knowing where your needs are met how your needs are provided. That's first chakra. So red stones are gonna help you pertaining to the attributes of the first chakra. And they also deal with um, sex or sexuality because the first chakra is located at the genitalia, you see. So issues of sexuality, uh, the color red pertaining to stones are also helpful for issues of the sexual belief system. Uh, whether you're healing or whether you're cultivating, cultivating your own uh, sexual belief system. You take the color orange. There are plenty of crystals out there that are the color orange. Those crystals are going to be good for the second chakra located at the belly. Second chakra. And the metaphysical attributes of the second chakra deals with relationships, also sexuality as well. Uh, money, wealth, and for women, goddess consciousness but for you know males too goddess consciousness you deal with the color yellow that's going to correspond to the color of the third chakra located at the solar plexus and the metaphysical attributes of the third chakra deals with self-esteem self-image confidence personal power skillful ego but it could also deal with unskillful uh, ego uh, sovereignty or personal sovereignty. This is it's your power source, the third chakra. So when you see yellow, you think of the third chakra. So when you see yellow stones, those stones are good for the third chakra, issues of the third chakra, whether they're pro or con, skillful or unskillful. You take the color green. Color green deals with inspiration and healing. That's my color as, as, as a healer. Um, an inspirational speaker. So green deals with healing. It deals with inspiration. It also deals with money because dollar bills are green. The fourth chakra has two colors, green, lower heart chakra is green, and then the higher heart chakra is pink. So you have green stones. Those stones will aid you in healing. They will aid you in inspiration. They will aid you in money or wealth cultivation. Pink 
I think most of us know what that color deals with, love. So your pink stones are helpful for purposes of love, but love is not the only attribute of the um, higher fourth chakra. It also deals with reciprocity, the ability to give and receive. Unconditionalness, especially in the area of love, unconditional love. Charity, philanthropy. These are all attributes of the upper fourth chakra. So the color pink, so when you see pink stones, you make the connection. Okay, these stones are good for, for cultivating love, unconditional love, and reciprocity, and benevolence, philanthropy, you see. So if you have knowledge of the colors, you, you're getting that insight. The fifth chakra, color of the fifth chakra, which is very important for myself as a Taurus, because throat, speak, expression. Taurus is the orator of the zodiac, um, Will. Taurus is the orator, the speaker. So the color light blue is very important for speakers, and especially if they happen to be Taurus, because Taurus governs the fifth chakra. So when you think about the attributes of the color light blue or sky blue, you're dealing with expression, higher expression, higher creativity, also soothingness, also calming. Blue, like the Pacific Ocean, pacify, calm. You move up to the sixth chakra, the color of the sixth chakra is indigo and you have indigo colored stones. You will know what those stones are good for if you understand the attributes of the sixth chakra, also known as the third eye, the seat of Christ consciousness, a very important chakra. Deals with Christ consciousness, which is very important. It deals with telepathy, intuition, clear audience, clairsentience, clairvoyance, it's deep. Very, very, very deep attributes of the sixth chakra. So when you see stones, the color of the sixth chakra, you can use those for purposes of cultivating one's in intuition, clairvoyance, telepathy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are what we call the, the metaphysical, um, the higher metaphysical attributes. When you deal with the seventh chakra, it, like the fourth chakra, has various colors. Violet, but then also translucence, as well as white. So violet, white, translucent, which is, a, which is basically clear. Those are the colors, and of course translucence is really not a color, uh, but for the sake of making the point. Translucence, white, violet, are all helpful for the seventh chakra, which is another powerful chakra because it deals with the divine, your connection to the divine. It is also the gateway, the gateway for the soul leaving the body during sleep and also at the time of death or transition. So crystals, the color of the seventh chakra, all three colors are very helpful for cultivating those attributes of the seventh chakra. So if you really want to work on meditation and communing with the higher self, communing with the divine, crystals, and also known as gemstones, are very helpful for that purpose. Now having the knowledge of the colors gave me insight into cert certain stones beyond their metaphysical attributes. In order to learn the metaphysical attributes, I had to study the crystals. And there are a plethora of books out there on crystals that will help you to learn about their attributes. I happen to have Capricorn in the third house, Placidus Orb. Capricorn deals with discipline. And the third house cor corresponds to Gemini, deals with the mind. Gemini governs the mind. So you have Capricorn in the third house or on the cusp of the third house, you have discipline, mentality, or mind, a disciplined mind, a very studious mind. So I came here in this present life dispensation with that. So I was able to learn a lot about the metaphysical attributes of crystals beyond their colors.
And that really helped to take me to the next level in addition to astrology and some other, other tools. I got deep, deep, deep into uh, crystals around 2003, 2004. I got so good I began to perform what is known as chakra balancing, which was, which is uh, an energy practice. It's dealing with energy. It is working with energy. The chakra themselves deal with energy. And I had gotten so good with the, with the crystals, I became known for trans crystal therapy. And I was able to take off in it because in my chart I have Leo uh, in the 10th house. So the business knack was there. A lot of people have, a lot of people who perform trans crystal therapy have difficulty bringing people in. You know, charging people a certain amount of money for the service. I didn't have any problems because I knew it was new to people and in order to get people into chakra balancing, which I knew was good for them, the business mind instructed me to give the first session for free. Now this is also some business advice even though I'm talking about uh, chakras. There's a lot of people out there and they have difficulty with the services. Um, even the lady who was speaking last night on the Pilates, you know, people don't want to pay, it's, it's difficult to get the message out there. What you have to do is, you have to push money to the side, because it, it, it will come. And give people a dose of something. Give people a dose and let them experience, because once they experience and get the effect, then they won't mind pain. I had meteorites like Moldavite, and I have this bracelet, I don't know where it is, but I know I have it. And it is powerful. And you put it on your wrist and it vibrates. Very, 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 very powerful. The pink stones, I mean, you, you feel the energy. You just feel love. You're holding love in your hand, you feel it. You know, the green stones, very healing. You know, and people who are more receptive to energy pick up on the attributes and the vibration quicker than those um, who are, for the most part, still operating on a very dense level. They may smoke, drink alcohol, eat meat, and low, vi low, low vibrations. They have difficulty feeling with certain individuals who, um, are, uh, who operate from light. You know, those individuals who fast, who meditate, who chakra balance, uh, you know, who are a vegan or a raw food is, it's, I've noticed that it, there's a, a difference between the two, because there are some people they can't feel, like I don't feel anything. And there's other people, I've met people doing uh, chakra balancing, you know, these were mostly females. And I remember this one particular female, you could just put the crystal over her, she would move. I mean, she felt everything. I mean, she was very uh, responsive uh, to energy. And uh, we got a lot of healing done with her because she was so receptive. Now for myself, using the crystals for chakra balancing because I perform a chakra balancing on myself. And it was very important. Chakra balancing is very important. Just like I talked about astrology being important in all aspects of life, so are the crystals. So are the crystals. Because when we talk about love, like yesterday I talked about love, I talked about health, I talked about money, I talked about life purpose. The crystals come in handy in those four departments as well. And Back in 2004, I began to heavily work on uh, my love quotient, you know, getting myself ready for love again. I had experienced a very traumatic divorce back in 2002. So, you know, I was damaged uh, for a good year, year and a half. And it was using the crystals that greatly helped me. The crystals at that point were more important than astrology because astrology was just giving me direction you know, who I would vibe with, sextiles, trines, you know, uh, conjunctions. So it was like a roadmap, but the crystals were important because the crystals helped to heal, you see. A lot of time we think about love, we just automatic, automatically think about like females, creatures of love, you know, but man, we're creatures of love too. It's just in this society, we have a lot of uh, wrong programming. You know, we have to always be hard. We have to be tough. You know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't cry. You know, we can't, or we're not supposed to express. You start working with the stones, you know, the stones say bump all that right there, you know, be. 
And that's what I learned from the pink stones. Pink calcite, rose quartz, rhoda, rhoda night, rhoda crocite, uh, morganite, uh, watermelon, tourmaline. I, I collected all the crystals. I had a table just, it was like on the land of the lost, you know, all the crystals laid out on a table. And so I can just, I could get my chakra balancing on anytime I wanted to. And dealing with the love, because I know I needed to heal in the love area. As I said yesterday, I have a stellium in the seventh house. So my issues, um, they deal with, my major issues deal, deal with love and relationships. So the pink stones came in handy. And I'm a radical too, you know, so when I learn something, I don't just, I, I don't go into learning with fear. Most people are very fearful. I'm one of the types like, you know what, if it kills me, so what? You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll, I'll come back, you know, um, or I'll be connected, you know, to the most high, no big deal. So I started putting crystals in the water and I came up with something called love water because I had programmed the stones for love and I put it in the water, so I called it love water. And I was drinking a gallon of it per day. And I was also putting the stones on my chest. And I mean, I had I, I, not just one, two, three, four, five stones, but like, you know, 20, 25 something stones, all my pink stones on my chest. I started off with one piece of uh, rose quartz, but I began to use all of my pink colored stones in my collection. And I put them on my chest and I could feel the vibration. I mean, it was really powerful. It was crystal surgery. It was going in and it was cutting the cords and it was healing all the past damage and not just from uh, intimate, you know, relationship, but even going back to loved ones, you know, relatives, you know, moms, pop, siblings, you know, cousins, you know, there's a lot of damage done that we hold in the fourth chakra area, okay? And because behind all of your chakras are organs, you see, that's what make crystals very powerful tools. Okay, not just for the energy healing, but also for the physical healing because every, every chakra is connected to a gland of the endocrine system. So you think of first chakra, the color red, you have to think of the adrenal glands. So if you have an adrenal gland disorder, you can help to heal that disorder by working on the first chakra. You move to the second chakra, behind the second chakra, the organs of the, the organs or gland of the endocrine system corresponding with the second chakra are the gonads. So we're dealing with the ovaries in the uh, female and the testicles in the male, but of course the testicles at the site of the first chakra. That's why some systems, they'll have, um, instead of the adrenal glands, they'll have the testes. But it's, it's usually the gonads at the second chakra, and especially for females, because females' organs are in, are located at the site of the second chakra. So a lot of time when women have these uh, female reproductive problems, the root cause is metaphysical. It's dealing with sexuality. They're ashamed of their past sex life, the rape, the molestation, the incest, you know, the hooking or prostitution, and all of those things. And so the damage is recorded in the second chakra, you see. So a lot of people don't understand that before you can heal physically, you gotta heal first energetically. I tell a lot of people that you don't really have to take herbs and do the raw foods and any of that. All you have to do is learn the lesson that has to deal with healing from an injury on some level. And it's usually dealing with life, going against life, doing something contrary to nature, con uh, contrary to life. That's really all it is. Just like in 2005, there was a point I had confusion about marriage and my feet was hurting. I'm like, damn, you know, my life is straight, so why is my feet hurting? What's my right feet? And uh, my right foot, excuse me, it was my right foot. Um, and it was, it was, there was pain there. And then when I made up my mind, like, okay, I'm about to do this. By the time I got back to Glendale, I was straight. I didn't have to do anything. It was gone. All I had to do was just make up my mind. The body speaks through metaphor, you see. And crystals are, 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 are very instrumental in this process because crystals help to make things clear, like clear quartz. Anytime you're not clear on something, you utilize clear quartz because clear quartz will help to give you clarity on all levels. Mental clarity, spiritual clarity. Clear colored stones induce 
clarity. So I had uh, my, I had crystal uh, balls, spheres all around. Also, when you have a sphere, that means the energy is holistic. It's gonna hit in all areas. So I had crystal balls all around, table full of crystals. I mean, man, life really began to become clear for me. I really began to have direction in life. The reason why my foot was hurting is because the feet deals with direction in life. You see, you have to learn to synthesize this information, the color therapy, the astrology, um, understanding uh, the crystals, you know, numerology. You have to bring it all together. You have to tie it all together. Some people are linear, they deal with one system, but with that system, because it's limited, they don't understand why they're still lacking or why things are not ascending into place. And it's because they're just using one tool. And all the tools should be used together divination cards, crystals, color therapy, astrology, numerology, palmistry, use it all. You know, especially if you want to really speed up things in your life. And for me, I needed to speed up things in my life. So the crystals were very, 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 very instrumental. Now I'm a Taurus, you know, as I said earlier, and we are the orators of the Zodiac. We're voice, we're the singers. We're the Luther Vandross, the Stevie Wonders, the Janet. We are the singers. These are all Taurus individuals, Barbara Streisand, orators. We have to speak. And if Taurus does not speak, Taurus is going to have throat problems, as I did growing up. Throat problems. You know, I had itchy throat, tonsillitis. I was just always messed up and it was always respiratory related. And in 1982, I almost died because of a respiratory related illness or disorder or so-called disease, which was bronchial asthma. Because Taurus governs the lungs or respiratory system. Taurus governs that. And Taurus governs the throat. You see, I didn't know that early off, but when I got the knowledge of it, and I learned how to use the crystals, not just for chakra balancing purposes, laying on stones, laying the stones on my body, I learned to also make the elixirs. I also learned to make the elixirs and I also learned to program water. I'm learning all this stuff at the same time. And I'm a radical, I'm solo, I'm locked up in an apartment because I had to heal, I had to work on myself. I became a radical, so I record classical music into the water with the crystal vibration and my programming on top of it. And as I said yesterday, you have to be bold. You have to be bold to appear crazy. Like, what the hell is this fool doing with the water next to the speaker? You know, that, that was my medicine. You know, and, and glasses of water on the window pane, exposed to moonlight, sunlight. It wasn't too long before people realized that I was really, really onto something. And I knew it because I could put a price on it and people would purchase it. They wanted it. People, I want this energy. I want, you know, um, I want a calm feeling, I, I want soothingness, I want happiness, I want love. All of these things that we really possess within. Crystals are just reminders. Like I don't work with crystals like I used to because I've internalized the knowledge of crystals, I've internalized the properties. I can use my mind to see pink, to see blue, to see red, to see orange and get an effect or get a result and I'm good to go. I don't do a lot of things I used to do because I've internalized to have candles. I could smell it and think of wealth because you can associate things with smell, with sight, with sound, with feeling. And I mastered all of that. So things really started to, to pick up. But I'm dealing with the power of crystals. Spiritually, I always felt I was a spiritual person but my spirituality enhances well too when I was really working strong with the crystals. The violet crystals, the indigo crystals. My third eye opened big time with pulsate. I could feel it. I met a Ayurvedic or an Indian guy at a convention and I purchased this obelisk, this amethyst obelisk. And I started to use the amethyst obelisk every morning and I will put it at the uh, Ajna chakra or the uh, seat of Christ consciousness and look into the sun with my eyes closed for five minutes. That was an exercise to open up, to stimulate 
the pineal gland, open up the sixth chakra and stimulate the pineal gland. It was powerful. And then I would start looking at sacred geometry cards. I was doing a whole bunch of stuff, but I was really working with the crystals more so than anything else. I was working with the incense and the essential oils. And like I said, everything you have to tie it all in together. I know it's, it's kind of difficult because there's a lot of information to learn the properties of the essential oil, the property of the herb, the property of the crystals, you know, the properties of the colors but it's worthwhile, you see. So, I always felt I was a spiritual person, but working with those stones opened me up, I mean, big time. I, I started dreaming again back in 1999, uh, when I got off, um, well, I got off meat in 1998, but in 1999, was, that, that was a very um, radical period for me, so I began to, to dream again uh, after becoming vegan. But in 2002, after my divorce, I started concocting um, herbal blends, valerian, kava kava, cinnamon, uh, some other herbs. And I began to purposely drink this concoction at night. And doing that, it really, really, really opened me up at the sixth and seventh chakra. It, most, in most cases, when you deal with the sixth chakra, you're dealing with the seven. When you deal with the seven, you're dealing with the six. And I began to have vivid dreams. I began to have prophetic dreams dreams like never before. I mean, dreams were like so colorful, it was like cartoons. And I can remember the dreams again. Cheroite comes to mind pertaining to dreams. There are a lot of people right now, I really think it's really a, a, a travesty um, that, that a lot of people don't remember their dreams. You have people who don't dream, and then you have people who don't remember their dreams. And I think that's a travesty because, you know, dreams connect to a different realm, you know, that we have access to, that we're a part of, which is the fourth realm or the lower astral realm. And information comes to us in different realms for this realm. You see, that's why I'm always working with divination. Every day, bam, I got the divination, the angel card. So every morning, the more you work with divination, the more you enhance your intuition. And intuition is very, very, very important. That's that voice that talks to you, you know, don't go that way. Go right. See, but you're not in tune, so the mind says, no, forget that, go left. And you go left and traffic is not moving. It's like, damn, I should have went right. I didn't trust it, you see. That's going against intuition. So the more you work with divination, the more you enhance your intuition, the more you become spiritually aware. Now I'm by myself during this time, physically speaking, because I wasn't by myself, because I had my angels. And during this period, I would become acquainted with my angels and my spirit guides, in addition to the elementals in the crystals. So this was a very mystical time for me, and my place was loaded with crystals the black stones for protection, absorbing negative energy, the black tourmaline for repelling the negative energy. And I was dealing with sovereignty then, so you know, I was dealing with the government, the FBI, and the city of Glendale, and I was going through a lot. And I know I made it because of the assistance, the cosmic assistance, guiding the words guiding the action, you walking down the street and the spirit guide, bump, go that way and you do. And you walk into a bookstore and you go to a section of the bookstore and you get a book just for you. You get some information that you asked about recently. It's just there and it's like, wow, had I not gone this way, I would have not ran into this bookstore or discovered this bookstore or a person. It's wow but you're, you go with the flow. And when you go with the flow, and as you go with the flow, you benefit in life. Crystals can help to open you up to be receptive to these things that I'm talking about.